aspects of how it relates. You know, it's not like a dead thing or it's not an idea just or just a, 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 it's like a scientific postulate. No, this this life, <laughs> it, it, ha, it coaxes you, it loves you, it comes and wants to fill you up and, and, and share that joy. And, and when you are in that state, you see that that life is coming up through all other life and doing that same thing. And, and then you can see when, when you look even in an, like I've seen it in my cat's eyes. I look in the cat's eyes and I'm like, yeah, I see you in there, universe. You know, I see, I see you looking <laughs> through the cat. Or, you know, I see, I see you over there, you know, lurking everywhere, playing hide and seek with me, trying to get my attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me put, a, let me read a little bit of it from the blog here. This is something that, came to me at the time, and I want to get it right here. Uh, it says, in all things great and small, I see the beauty. That That's the idea here. I, and I'm saying great and small actually is redundant, as greatness and smallness is a product of the limitations of the human mind. Uh, and this is something, the next sentence is something that I got uh, from one of my... Uh, favorite books, uh, value is a property of logical reasoning only. The universal mind acts on all probabilities in all possible directions all at once. Mm -hmm. My understanding of the proverbial big, band, big Bang Theory is that everything that has and will happen in our present cycle of creation has already happened at the moment of the so-called Big Bang. Yeah. Mm. What we are experiencing as events unfolding in sequential time are the shadows or mm. the repercussions of what has already happened in such a condensed form that only the universal divine mind could experience it. In order for the divine mind to share it with us, or to put it more correctly, to live it through us as us. Mm. These events in time and space had to be delivered to our poor limited minds in a sequential man the sequential manner of our daily lives. Otherwise, how could we possibly share in it our mental cap capacities being what they are? I sense this as being true. In fact, I remember it as being true. To be more accurate, I, as a center of expression for the primal will to good, have tapped into the cosmic memory and seen that what I have just described is essentially so. This is truth about the self. So I ask you, what could be more beautiful than this? Case closed. Well, yeah, man. That's the whole thing. Like, even your wildest dreams are, it's not even as good as the reality. I mean, the reality is, that's the joy of it. That's the beauty of discovering what's happening is, ah, yes. Uh, you know, like your fears lift and all that you ever hoped is so. You know, all that you ever could imagine of goodness, of grace, of beauty of uh you know it, it is it all is it all is <laughs> let's throw a big horseshoe into the middle of this right. stew here well what about the horrors of war what's that why is why is the whole world in such a negative dark space mm. with all the killing is this just the wake up call that we seem to need well I mean that's, I mean, that's the only way I, a heavy I mean one, here yeah. we yeah. say everything is beautiful and wonderful and it is yeah. and yet the world that we live in well certainly I wouldn't say I wouldn't, con I wouldn't describe the news that's on every day about what's going on, well, as, as necessarily beautiful and wonderful. Well, see, that's that's just it. You, I mean, it's a good point because we we, like you say, like we say, everything is beautiful and ideal and yeah. and, and great. 
Yeah. No, but but that does not exclude the fact that we cannot consider these things in their own realm, in their own way. You know, because we are, we are both that. You know, like when when we become when we can be truly watchful, we can have that cosmic mind, that ultimate. A place of reference, but we can also drift up and down. You know, we can go through the astral realms, we can come down into the body, we can turn our mind to this issue, that issue, down here on the ground. And then, in fact, that is how we draw from those higher sources and uh, transmute the energy to reach the density to get it in a form that can actually uh, have an impact by matching it up with the circumstances that are occurring. And uh, I think there is an element of earth and earth life. There's kind of a primal instinct, you know. There's always been uh, killing, you know. And I think maybe that's a measure of consciousness and where consciousness is on a global scale, you know. Because I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a lot of pain from people being conscious of that killing in a way that's never happened before. That's been made available by the media and by you know, means is this, that, you know, people are feeling it and people are in agony over it and more and more people just can't bear what's happening. So maybe, you know, in that sense, it's it's showing that people are becoming more conscious and at some point they will say enough is enough. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> that's my, that's the day I want to be here still. <laughs> When the people say to all the pol political shenanigans that's going on worldwide, all right, we're through with you guys. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, take a stand for life. You know, take a yeah. stand for what you know is, is right, yeah. for what's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's go on here. It says number seven. That's a good time to put number seven in there. And let me prefer it. Let me preface this with: Are we going to be stuck with war forever? <laughs> the war on terror. <laughs> okay, number seven says: Living from that will, and supported by its unfailing wisdom and understanding, mine is the victorious life. Yeah. I mean, courage, you know, the courage that it takes to live that way, you know, it invokes in me that thought of, I was just describing this to a friend of mine just uh, uh, today and yesterday that, you know, it's somewhere in me was awakened this, uh, you know, almost a knightly quality or, you know, this taking up the mission and knowing that, you know, almost like a self-validated thing. Like, there's not very many people that can say, yes, you know, you do have this personal uh, mission on the earth to carry this good work but you know when you when you realize that about yourself and you awaken that about yourself and face that about yourself and, and embrace that then you can walk that consciously and you know that you are that awake representative a meeting every moment to change people's lives just by being the living example of truth you know I'm the way and the truth and the light yeah Let's look at it through a slightly different window. Um, I'm very aware right now of David Eichness <laughs> because I've been reading his books and just lapping it up. Uh, like what a tremendous fountain of uh, outpouring that this person is! Just uh, amazing. Uh, the question is. If we are in this matrix, which we all appear to be in, 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 in some fashion or another, are we going to be doomed to being controlled by all these negative energies? Or, when enough of us expand to the point to where we know that we can turn around and not look at the shadows and see the reality, as in Plato's cave metaphor, uh, we can reprogram the matrix. 
to well, be the paradise instead of the hell that it, it's that it seems to be going well, I'll towards. I'll tell you, dude. I'll tell you. You know, as you're talking that, I can see that that question you posed to me earlier about you know change, or as we were talking about the universe and how you just got to see what seems obvious and be able to move with that instead of being hell bent on your own want, personal wants, needs, and limited point of view, I mean, when you, as you're just saying that, it's the same question all over again, you know, it's the society, on just on a macro scale, 